message. Amen. Glory to God. I'm hoping that you can able to hear me this morning nice and clear. Amen. This morning. Glory to God. If I can get an amen, if you can hear me on the conference line. Glory to God. If I can get an amen, if you can hear me amen. on Facebook. Glory to God. And if I can get an amen, if you can hear me on Zoom, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, amen. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, amen. God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel good this morning. I'm trying something new from a different place, a different space. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah for those that are on Facebook. Amen. You see us in a different little location. Amen. Doing the things of this nature. God gave me something for you all. Amen. And I want to give you all this. Amen. And glory to God. I'm 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 excited to to give it to you because every time I every time I thought I was finished, he had me add a little bit more in. Amen. Glory to God. So God is so good. He's so wonderful. Amen. Glory to God. But I want to make sure we get the announcements in and out of the way. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. So we turn this over to our own evangelist, Lady Sunshine. Amen. Glory to God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome everyone to Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries, the official church without walls. Feeding your faith and doubt will start. We welcome everyone this wonderful Sunday morning at 11 a.m. to our Sunday message services with our own beloved Pastor Bryant. We also invite everyone on Monday at 7 p.m. for Bible study with our own minister, John L., and special guests. We also welcome everyone to join us Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. on the prayer line where we will pray for you and with you. A wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. We welcome everyone to Friday Encouraging Word at 7 p.m. where many times we have guest speakers and Bible trivia. You never know what's going to happen on Friday, encouraging word, but you're always guaranteed a good time in God. We welcome everyone every first Saturday of the month for our first fruit prayer with our own evangelist, Diane Hooks from New York City between the hours of 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. We invite each and every one of you to first fruit prayer every first Saturday of the month, giving God the first fruit of all things. And we also would like to inform everyone worldwide that we have unity prayer at 6 a.m., 12 p.m. noon, and 6 p.m. at night. So 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. Unity prayer. Praying for global change. For yes. change, Christ, and community. So we welcome each and every one of you to come and join us. Also, we'd like to give everyone some wonderful good news. We have a men's ministry and a women's ministry. International Ladies of Distinction, facilitated by our own Evangelist Outlaw. And BWK, Brothers with Knowledge, facilitated by Deacon Steve. For more information on the men's or women's ministry, we encourage you, send us an email, and we will give you all the pertinent information. And you can email us at wordofthelamb at outlook.com. That is wordofthelamb at outlook.com. Also, we'd like for you to know, and we want to first embrace each and every one of you across the United States and in Puerto Rico for partnering up with Word of the Lamb in your generous 
Thanksgiving. Your donations are tax deductible and 100% of your gift goes to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout all four corners of the world. And we thank you once again. And if you'd like to partner with us and send a donation or love offering, you can do so on our website or on our mailing address. P.O. Box 320-391, Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. Again, our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 320-391, Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. Our website is www.wordofthelamb.org. That is wordofthelamb.org. For membership, inquiries, or you would like to be placed on watch, or you just want to know what must I do to be saved, feel free to drop us a line at wordofthelamb at outlook.com. We would love to hear from listeners all over and how this ministry, how Jesus Christ has impacted and changed your life through this ministry. Feel free to drop us an email. We'd love to hear a praise report. We'll praise with you at wordofthelamblightoutlook.com. We want to encourage everyone today to be comfortable, sit back and relax. This is going to be a wonderful day. The word coming forth is a unique word today that God has gifted us and we would like everyone to just lay back and relax and enjoy the word and let it penetrate as a wonderful seed in the soil and good ground of your heart, mind, soul, and spirit. And let it blossom and in his perfect will. So, without further ado, we also would like to let everyone know, as we give this over to our own beloved Pastor Brian, that if you have a device, as I do, you can mute your phones in two ways. Your mute button on your smartphone, you can press four star to mute your phone and press four star to unmute your phone and pray freely. And if you have a device, you can also simply say, Alexa, press four star. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For those that are on Facebook, amen. Glory to God. Give me a second. Amen. And we will get you over here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God for you in a special way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus that all things are working in your will. Glory to God. That God is just blessing us in all ways possible. We thank you for that in the name of Jesus. For those that are, hallelujah. For those of us who are, uh, hallelujah, for all of those who are, amen, on conference line, amen, just be with us for a quick minute or two, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, I feel good today, y'all, uh, you know, I feel good, I feel real good today, I feel real, real good, that I can say to y'all, I feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy, but I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Hallelujah. I wanted to let you know the Father God in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus and for each and every particular way that it is, Father. I'm asking you that you will open up every door, Father God of heaven, Father, and that you will reign upon us. Lord, I'm asking you that it will be less of me and more of you, Father God, as you pour into us, Father. I'm asking you that the word penetrate the heart, the mind, the soul, and the spirit, and it touches right where we are. Lord, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Giving honor to God and Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. To all the XMs, meaning Christians, 
with the highest regard and intellectual integrity, I stand before you today to expound and share with you the Rama of the Logo, meaning the written and spoken word of God. Glory to God. I'd like to say good morning to each and every one of you. Hallelujah. And I want to let you know that I love each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm letting you right now know, hallelujah, as I always like to say, that Sister Gwen is with us. And when Sister Gwen is on, you know I can preach. Amen. Glory to God. If you would be so kind as to remember to have your sword with you, amen, I'm requiring to each one of you to keep your sword with you. The sword, if you do not know, for those who do not know, is the word of God. And if you have your sword with you, somebody say amen and amen. glory to God. And with your sword, I'll ask you that you turn, I want you to turn and drive your pages of your book to the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, and park it at the ninth verse. When you have it, somebody say amen. Glory to God. Amen. Genesis, the sixth chapter, the ninth verse. Hallelujah. We we reading from the sixth through the through through the amen we have it amen we'll be reading through a few a few of the chapters so just bear with us all the way i believe to the 24th amen glory to god hallelujah and i want y'all to be relaxed today i want y'all to to hear this because i'm going to give you the same message in two different ways amen but I want you to hear it this way. I won't give you the title of our message just now. Good. Glory to God. We won't give you the title of the message just now. We're going to give that and wait for it. You know, we've been taught sometimes that we're supposed to give our aim or we're not supposed to give our aim. And today I'm I'm a I'm a wait to the end to give you the aim in which we have amen glory to god hallelujah so let's read from the uh our bibles i'm reading from the um, english standard bible today amen genesis the ninth excuse me genesis the sixth chapter the ninth verse and it starts off as this this is the account of noah and his family noah was a righteous man blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jezebeth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. He saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people of the earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence. Because of them, I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of Cephas wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch in and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Shayla. Make a roof for it. Leave below the roof an opening one cubit high all around. Put a door on the side of the ark and make a lower, middle, and upper deck. And I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all the heavens, every creature that has breath of life in it. Everything on earth shall perish. 
but I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark and you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives and you. And you are to bring unto the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Then the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and your family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their varieties, various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now will I send rain on the earth, and forty days and forty nights and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. And Noah did all the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters came on the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wives and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and unclean animals, of birds, and all creatures that moved along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark. And God had commanded Noah, and all, and after the seven days, the flood came into the earth in the 600th year of Noah's life. And on the 17th day of the seventh month, on the day that the springs of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of heaven opened up and rain fell upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On the very day, Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Joseph, together with their wives and, and, their, and the wives of their three sons, entered the ark. They had every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kind, all every creature that moves along the earth according to its kind. According to its kind. Everything with wings. Pairs of all creatures that had breath in life that came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going were male and female of every living thing, as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord shut him in. For forty days the flood kept coming on the earth, and the waters increased they lifted the ark high above the earth the waters rose and gently greatly increased on the earth and the ark floated in the surface of the water they rose greatly in the earth and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered the waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits Every living thing that moved on the land perished. Bird, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarmed over the earth, and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had breath of life in its nostrils. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals, the creatures that moved along the ground, the birds were wiped out from the earth. Only Noah was left, and those with him in the ark. The waters flooded the earth for about a hundred and fifty days. Amen. 
Amen. We know the story of Noah because we heard it so many times. Amen. Right? We know the story of how it's been told. We've even seen it on television that some, some people haven't read it, but they've seen it on TV, so they got their TV version of what was going on. It's been told to us in many stories and biblical natures and amen. And we know that we truly believe that the Lord flooded the earth. We know that there evidence that is done. Now, We've heard all these things, and we know them to be true. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to read this story to you again, the way God gave it to me last night. And the title I'm going to use today is, Really, God? Noah heard a voice calling him, and he knew it was the Lord, and this is what he said. You listening? Amen. You want me to do what? You want me to say what? I heard you, but Lord, you know they're not going to want to listen to everything I got to say. Even if I try it, they want to, they're still not going to hear what I have to say. Yeah, I know you called me. And yes, you said that if you called me, I know that I'm qualified because you called me. But, but, but Lord, these are hard-headed people. What? Well, yeah, I guess I'm hard-headed too. But but I just want to say one thing, if I can. All right, thank you, Lord. Really, Lord? Really, Lord? This is a joke, right? I, I know how funny you can be. I know that this is a joke. No joke? Hmm. Okay, well, I guess I'll do what you asked me to do. Hey, people, you people, yeah, gather around. Lord told me to tell you it's going to rain extremely hard. Don't laugh. I know it never rained before. But rain is water, y'all. Huh? Yeah. I'm going to keep on saying this. So what if I've been saying it every day? I'm trying to tell you something that the Lord is saying. Are you listening to me? And no, I'm not crazy. And yes... For the last time, this is where he told me to build it. And yes, I know it's not near water. And yes, I know it's big. But it's going to rain a lot, I tell you. Keep laughing. Hey, family. Hi, family. How you doing today, family? How are you? Guess what, y'all? I heard from the Lord. What? I'll tell you what he said in a minute. Hold on. It looks like we... Huh? Yes, we. I didn't stutter. 
We gotta build a boat. How big a boat? Um, well, God said an ark. And the ark we have to get two of each kind of creatures. Hmm. I'm not sure how we, <laughs> we're going to do that, but, uh, God will tell them that I believe he's going to give them instructions on how to get there. But I'm still going to listen and do what God, Jehovah, told me, tells me to do. I'm going to listen and do what Jehovah told me to do. What? Do you have a choice? No. Go get the wood, the Cephas wood. You get the pitch, and you get the things. Y'all gather the straw. Y'all gather the things that we need. This is going to happen. And we're not going to let God down. He gave us an assignment. And so with the assignment comes the fact that we are got to do this, okay? Did I get it okay? Can somebody give me an okay? All right. Thank you. I got an okay. That's right. It's time to get it's time to get to work. We hear all these things and we know some things. I'm giving you what God gave me. What? You want us to do what? Huh. You want us to go where? And you want us to walk there. But that's so far. And when we get there, you want us to go in what? But Lord, I'm not worried about us. Who going to feed them? Who's going to keep us safe? Who's going to feed us? Lord, can I ask you a question? You know that some of us don't like each other. And some of us are food to others. Now, Lord, I'm now, what guarantee that we won't get eaten while we're on this, um, what do you call it again? Uh, thank you. We're on, we're on this ark. Hmm? Yes? Hey, y'all, the Lord has given us his word. And well, that's good enough for me. Hi, family. Hello, Morning. family. God bless you. I heard from the Lord. Hush, 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 hush. Be quiet, y'all. And I'll tell you what Jehovah said. He wants us to walk in this direction and we are to meet his hand-picked man. He's building an ark. Huh? <laughs> That's a real good question. An ark? Hold on, let me check. Lord? Excuse me. What's an ark? Okay. Thank you. An ark is a boat that goes on the sea. What? Yeah, I know we're headed toward dry land. Huh? I know that some of y'all can't swim. What? 
we will have peace in the ark. So it'll be peaceful. Right? We're going to have peace. We're going to be all right. We're going to do it because God told us to do it. We're going to do it because he said to do it. And guess what? It won't be that bad. I guess we can live a few days with man. It won't be that bad. Both Noah and the beast asked God, Lord, how many days will it be? That many, huh? Well, we better start praying now. But let your will be done. But Lord, we really got to ask you, really? Really? Really, Lord? Do you really want us to go in this direction? Did you really command us to do these things? I realized something. In the midst of what God was telling them, That even in the back of their mind, they were saying, really? They still put it in their hearts to follow the instructions. I'm reminded of the time of myself of getting ready to do something. And the Lord had told me to go talk to somebody and I did not do it. And in the middle of the night, the Lord got me up with a rake in my hand in the middle of a snow. Now imagine snow on the ground, me outside with a rake. And for some reason, I was at the front of this tree raking nothing but snow. And the person that I hadn't missed and not talked to earlier strolled by. What's the odds of that? Knowing that it only can be the Lord. And so figuring that I didn't want to just be out here when this rake and 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 in the snow, I said, Can I talk to you for a minute? And they looked at me when I kind of had to explain, you know, I'm out here with a rake, but I got something the Lord put on my heart to tell you. And I meant to tell you earlier. And I told them. And they got an understanding. They were receptive. How many times in your lives, y'all, each and every one of you? <laughs> have you took the opportunity to um, do some things that God has told you to do kind of um, and you let them slip by the wayside sometimes the Lord has told you to um, talk to somebody but you let them slip by the wayside. Sometimes the Lord has given us individuals who he put before us and he told us what to do and we didn't do it. Sometimes the Lord has given you instructions, instructions from other people and because we don't want to hear from them, we don't want to do it I've been guilty of that many times in my own self sometimes we don't want to hear the people closest to us but we'll listen to the people who are further away from us because sometimes the people who are closest to us 
it just hurts a little more coming from them or we just upset if they say something. Not knowing that those are usually the people who are in your best interest. How many times have you been talked to somebody and told them, you know, I'm going to call you. I'm going to talk with you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to have a conversation with you only to realize that you haven't done any of those things. The Lord has put it on your heart for you to call somebody and you have it in your mind to call them and then something else comes up and then you slips out of your mind and you never call. So now he's got to put somebody else on the case to fill in the gap where you didn't fall into. Or he'll send a reminder to you for you to do that. And sometimes the person that you are meant to call calls you and you got something to say because that's the only way you're going to get the call, phone call. is because otherwise you might be too busy. Palm, uh, Psalms 32 and 8 tells us. I will instruct you and teach you in the ways you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eyes on you. Meaning that God is going to be always looking upon you. He's going to instruct you and counsel you. I'm, I got a few questions that I like to ask. Usually I like to ask them at the beginning, but today I'm asking them at the end. I want to know a few things, but first, before I want to know a few things, I want to just talk with you. Have you been listening to what God has been telling you to do? Have your instructions come? <coughs> Excuse me. Have your instructions come from other people and yet you still ignore them? Some of us have uh, the Band-Aid syndrome. That just means that you're bleeding or in need of help. This is just my, my interpretation. You get a Band-Aid, it helps you along your way. You feel good, your bleeding stops. You run and get it, but never took the opportunity for complete healing. And then you get hurt again, where your wound opens up, and then you run back for another band-aid. But then you're not realizing that every time you run back, the band-aid has to get bigger. How many of us have took the opportunities to do some things and know that we need to stop doing them so we can listen to the word of God? And sometimes he's telling you to do some things that don't even sound right. The Lord will never tell you to take your life that end of God. The Lord ain't going to tell you to do a few other things that ain't of God. But the Lord will make you go outside with a rake and talk to somebody because you need to give them the instructions that the Lord had already told you to do. Every prophet and every prophetess that was in the Bible didn't want to run and do this all willingly. They resisted because 
they really didn't want to say what they have to say. But they want to be able to make sure that you are all right because it's the word of God and not of them. We put our concentration sometimes on everything that is not of God that we forget about him. I got questions for you today. I know that some people won't understand them. Some people will tune this out. Some people will say it's not for me. Some people might say they might not like the message. But how do you know that God's not getting ready to use you right now to be able to go ahead and bring this message to someone else? My question to you today is when the Holy Ghost starts to, to do something in you, And it may sound strange to you. And you know it's the Spirit of God. Will you do it? Have you done it? Or have you just dismissed it? If you know that God has already told you to do something, but yet you're holding back doing it because you keep saying to yourself, I don't know. Why is that? Hmm? Can you endure it? When all seems to be against you? Hmm? I'm just bringing you to the back of Noah. You see, Noah had to do some things that might have seemed a little bit different because he had to build an ark that was extremely big with many different floors in it, and he had to do it, and he did it on some land that was already dry. He had to go with people not only mocking him, but his family and his even his sons. They had to have the strength and the fortitude to continue to do what they want to do, even though people were laughing at him. We also have to look at their wives, Noah's wives and the wives of the sons, because they had to endure some stuff that was there from the people they had to endure the stuff from their family members. They had to endure the stuff from their mother-in-laws and their sisters-in-laws and their brothers-in-laws and their cousins and their friends. They also had to listen and understand and even console Noah and they even had to console the sons for all the things that they were going through. Can you endure when God is trying to tell you and tell, making you do something? And even if it's not popular with people, can you endure it? Even if he's telling you to be perceptive and he's asking you to, to, to move in a certain way. Can you handle it when the Lord proclaims something and other people laugh at you? Noah had to endure it. Because he had to go through some stuff. When he told them it was going to rain, people laughed at him. 
when he told him it was going to flood, it was going to laugh at him. See, because rain never came from the heavens. If you read the Bible, it says that it missed it from the ground. It might have came and overflowed a little bit on the streams. But it never rained like he talked about rain. But on the day that rain came from the heavens and the expanse broke and waters kept running and he was enduring and God said, go into the ark. He knew that he had to give them that commandment. And God shut him in, him and the animals, the ones that he put into their mindset to get there. And each one had an instruction on how to get there. And he put peace within each and every animal, clean and unclean. And could he know it would really endure? How hard it must have been from him to hear people knocking on the door. Wanting to come in. In our aspects, in our areas, in our places, in our thoughts are always on. We've got to try to help people in. But Noah had been telling them this for many years. It is not until dire straits come, help me, Holy Ghost, that a lot of people will start to get a come to Jesus moment. Now, don't let your come to Jesus moment be too late for you to come to Jesus. Don't let the things that are going on in life distract you. When all seems to be against you, can you still endure? When you're caught up in your own feelings. Can you endure it? Can you push back from your feelings? Or better yet, can you push through them to do the world of God? Some of you have been raised enough to know right from wrong. Some of us have been on this earth long enough to know right from wrong. And if you're over the age of one, that includes you. But yet, we're still dabbing, we're still dipping, we're still moving, we're still rocking in the areas that God does not want us to be in. But on the day that he calls you and said for you, I need you to ride your car right down the street, park it in the middle and wait, sit on the side of the curb. And you say, oh, why, God? Should the Lord have to explain it to you? Or should you just say, I'm going to do what you want me to do, Lord? Remember, you have to know that it's from God.
And what happened if you parked yourself across the street, waited on that curb, and if five minutes later a person comes up with a flat tire and you just happen to have the proper jack that they need, and while you're talking in, about the tire, they sat there and told you about what they're going through. That sometimes our job is just to listen. Sometimes our job is to hear. Sometimes our job is to pray. And sometimes our job is just to be an encouragement. But if the assignment is on you to encourage somebody who do you don't even know because you happen to be in a certain place, how many times has that happened to you? How many times have you moved into that direction? Can I get an amen? Can I get a glory to God? Can I get someone to be able to tell me that I'm talking all right? I need someone to let me know that they're doing some things. Now, I, 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 I understand. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That we're a church without walls. So I have to keep on letting you know that this particular spot is especially designed. Don't get distracted. Don't let anything or anybody stop you from doing the will of God. There are times in our life when everything will come to us. There will be individuals who will come in our direction. There will be individuals who will walk in our way. For some of us right now, they are already looking on Facebook. For some of us right now, you are already looking at the television. I got the screen up, but the volume down. For some of us, our minds and our hearts are hearing what the word has to say. For some of us, we're listening to what we're saying, but we're typing in a different way. For some of us, we're watching television and our mind is on the TV and not on us. You are saying, I've been to church, but you haven't gave God any glory. See, I'm here to let you know, don't let nothing distract you from the word of God. Because every little piece that you get builds you up in places. You say, I want to prosper in this area. Then you need to make sure that you get all of the God's given to you. I'm reminded of him feeding the 5,000 with the bread and the fish. I'm reminded that he fed the children and the women as well. So there was more than 5,000. 
But I'm reminded of what he told the disciples. After everyone ate, he said, go around and pick up the fragments so that nothing will be lost. Every bit of God. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Every fragment. Get every piece of it. Don't let you get caught up in your feelings. Can you ignore the ones around you? Can you endure when they're laughing about you? Can you take it when they call you different? Can you stay strong when your feelings get hurt? Because anybody who does the will of God, they're going to call you a peculiar people. But when you hear the instructions of God, they're going to call you a little foolish. Remember Moses took 40 years to get rid of his old self. And it took him another 40 years to understand God or somewhat understand him. just a tiny bit because he didn't understand him as well we don't understand God we can just get as much as we can but when he was instructed to go back he said that I didn't speak eloquent enough I'm I stutter I can't speak But he started to get an understanding of God because the Lord was letting him know as he started to show him, I am with you. That even though, hallelujah, there might have been some problems, even though there might have been some issues, he still did what the Lord had told him to do. And now I'm asking you this question. Would you do what God asked you to do? Or do some of y'all say, really God? Is We want to say sometimes in our heart what we want to do. We have it in our mind what we are like to do. We know within our heart what we will do. When the wall, God calls you and tells you and gives you instructions to go and talk to somebody Pray for the words to be correct. Don't duck the assignment. Hallelujah. Don't duck the assignment. Glory to God. Don't duck the assignment. But instead of ducking the assignment, hallelujah, pray for the words because you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings.
Because you never know when God's going to have you build your own ark. You never know when he has to have you build some things together so that you can have some other individuals. Sometimes your art could be your car. Sometimes your art can be your heart. Because sometimes you have to show some people some love that haven't had love. You have to show them that brotherly and sisterly love because they need to have that. They haven't had it. There's some who are so lost in this world that they don't get an understanding. They don't get the understanding of what God will do for them because when they look around, they only see misery, they only see pain, so they don't understand God, but don't understand that if they change who they are, if they can move from a certain way, if they will walk in the direction to where God is, that pain and those things will move away. Hmm, I'm almost done. We want to say what's in our heart at times. We sometimes want to butt against the things that God has put before us. And so many times in my life that I have just looked up and said, really, God? That's the title of my message, by the way. That I had to say, really? You really want me to say that? You really want me to do that? I really wasn't asking the question. I was just confirming it myself that either way, I'm still going to do the will of God. But I'm at the point right now that if he tells me to do it, I'm going to do it. If there's something I said, I'm going to say it. Some people might take it wrong. Some people might take it right. But if it accomplished what it needs to accomplish, that's why we have to pray before we say. Because the people who we talk to are like the fragments and Jesus had the disciples pick up and the fragments that he connected and put into the bot to the to the baskets he said that he want nothing pick them up because he said nothing to be lost we might have a hard time talking to somebody we might have a tough time moving in, in and understanding some people. But I know this for sure. We serve a God who is grateful and wonderful and holy, who can do all things. We serve that same type of God who will put a message in your ear that you're going to lead the people out of Egypt. It's the same one that tells you that you're going to build an ark. Because I want to save humankind. The same one that says that today you're going to have the strength that you required. And you're going to pull down the columns that you didn't do before. But now you'll be able to. The same one to tell you that your job is to tell them to repent. The same one who allowed a present girl named Mary to be the mother of Christ. 
the same one who allowed the disciples to receive the Holy Ghost on high. The same one, God, who gives instructions to us today, daily in the form of a Bible, in the form of the men and women and children of God. He's the same God who has spoken into your ear in the past weeks. He's the same God that gives you love and compassion and understanding, chastisement and strength. He's the same God that will love you and heal you. He's the same God who tells you, don't put your mouth on the anointed ones. He's the same God who loves you, regardless of how you are. He's the same God who is able to judge you for no one else can. He's the same God who put an assignment on you that you needed to go talk to a certain person and you knew that you had to talk to him because it was on your mind and your heart and your soul. And until you finished doing what you needed to do, it was still there. He's the same God that if he sees you procrastinating, he will send someone else to take care of your job and still make you do your job. He's that same God. Now, if for some reason today you have decided that you're want to be closer to the Lord thy God if you want to know Jesus for yourself then I'm asking you to take the opportunity to think about just this why put off tomorrow what you can do today don't wait a little bit if the Lord is calling you and he's telling you, I need you to be with me. I need you to be closer to me. I want you to get to know you. And you're having in your mind and your heart that I want to know the Lord. Then come. If you're on Zoom, come. If you're on Facebook, come. If you're on our conference line, come. For those who hear this message and desire that to be, listen, we have word of the lamb at outlook.com. That is our email address, word of the lamb at outlook.com. Send an email to me and your telephone number. The evangelist and I will talk with you. We will walk you through being saved. And then show you in a direction on how to continue to keep being that way. See, there are some in this lifetime who have been saved and just have fallen off because of this and that. And they let the cares of this world kind of bring them out of their, their surroundings. If that's you or if you're not dedicated as much as you thought you would be or you're not dedicated like you like to be or you got the point in your life where you're saying to yourself i i need to be dedicated in the direction that i want to be i want to know jesus or i want to get back into knowing jesus Or you've been on watch long enough that you're saying that it's my time to be 
formerly covered, I'm formerly under a ministry, formerly in, in a place where I know that I can be. We're more than happy to be that. For those that are just wanting to be rededicated and said, I, I just need some prayers right now to bring me through. I need somebody to help me, get me back into my direction. Well, the person that's going to help you is yourself. Amen. But glory to God, we're definitely going to pray for you. And amen in a way that will bring you through. Amen. Just repeat after me. Father, I have fallen short. I could have done things better. I could have said some things better. I could have acted some ways better. I could have thought some ways better. Lord, I stand, sit, or kneel before you, asking you to forgive me. I'm asking you that you try me one more time in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I'm asking you to help me continue to move forward instead of moving backwards. Help me to shift when I need to shift. Help me to stop when I need to stop. Help me to go when I need to go. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you have prayed those prayers, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, we welcome you back in. For those that are on the line and you're saying that I've, I've been on watch for a while and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited and I still want to be a part of this ministry and I want to join Full Fledged, then we welcome you too. For those who are desiring to want to become members of Word of the Land Ministry, we ask you that you look upon our website and read what we believe in. If you're not sure where you can find it, you can always... Email us and we will send you a copy of what we believe in. I believe that you should do this for every ministry that you are a part of or any ministry that you're a part of. Because when you're a part of a ministry, you need to know what you believe in. So that you will know if it's a place for you to be. And for those that are out there and you're not exactly sure what home you should be in. I'm suggesting and telling you to find your home. This is a good place to be. I'm also asking for all those that are on the line. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? And Lord, I've done what you've asked me to do. Glory to God. I moved in every direction that you told me to move in. Lord, I'm asking that they'll be receptible in everything that has been put before them, Father. So when we say, really, God, we're not questioning you, Father. We're just trying to get ourselves together so we can do what it is that you want us to do. We're just shocked by how we have to reveal it. Lord, I'm asking you right now in the name of Jesus that if you driving today, God bless you, Brother Henry. God bless you, all those who are watching on worldwide. But if you are driving today, don't close your eyes. If you are on the passenger side of the vehicle and even in the back and you trust the driver enough to close your eyes, then do just that. For those who are near the stove when cooking because you let other things might have distract you or you had to go flip that chicken over or turn over that fish. Step back from the stove. If you got your babies in your hand, don't lift your hands up in there. But if you 
are clear from all those things, then I ask you to close your eyes and lift your hands toward the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your influence and your influx, God. We thank you for what you have done, Father, and for every word that you have put before us. Really, Father? Really, God? And we can sit back and know the hallelujah. That things are there. Hallelujah. And Lord, I'm asking right now, God, because I heard you. That you will touch the hem of their garments, God. I ask you that there will be blessings in every way possible, Father, for the ones who are hurting right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, God, hallelujah, God. I'm asking you to bless them in all ways possible. I'm asking you to overflow in their household. Mm. And I'm not talking about the outer pains, but I'm talking about the invisible inner ones. The ones that no one else sees. Lord, I'm asking you that we put our hands upon it, Father, and that you will heal them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm also asking you that you will touch every individual on this line. We pray a special prayer for all of the brothers and sisters, the ones who are missing, the ones that are there. Lord, we ask you to look upon Samantha Dewar, Anika Smith, Grace Morel, Father. I'm asking you that you continue to bless them in all ways possible. Overflow in their areas, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Master, you to touch, heal, and save in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. For those that are on Facebook, God continue to bless you. When we continue to be with you, and may God continue to keep you and hold you in Jesus' name. Amen.